So this is the 2012 Leica M240 that I've owned since actually 2014, so two years uh, after it was launched. Um, so I wanted to just uh, go over the camera in 2022 and uh, discuss how good it is, what was the experience with it, is it still good enough, can you use it, how can you use it. Does it have enough sharpness for you, color quality, anything that I that I can think of. So, first things first, uh, the camera is 10 years old, uh, original released in September 2012. Uh, it's been just 10 years since it was released. So, um, pretty pretty old camera for the technology standards. But, uh, as you can see, the camera is still in good shape. I, I kept it very well with the exception of this uh, uh, leather issue here. Everything else has been pretty solid, no issues with it. Um, right now it's mounted with the 50mm 50 50mm 50 uh, lens. It's the Summilex lens 1.4. So, um, well... At the Let's let's talk about uh, first the features of the ca of the camera, what it has and what it doesn't have. So, first thing is the camera is a manual focus camera. As you can see, you use a, a notch or the the lens itself to uh, manually focus the camera. There is no automatic focusing uh, involved in the Leica M camera. So. The, the next thing is this this camera uses an optical uh, image view, viewfinder. It uses this p uh, the two pieces that are, that are needed for for it to focus. You have a piece here and a piece here. You're looking through this one, but this one will be showing in here, and the image will be sliding left to right while and, and it's in focus when you match both pieces. So, uh, what else does the camera have? So it has an optical viewfinder. You have a, a easy to use controls here for the aperture speed. You can adjust them. There is a different lock to the A. It locks a little bit more solid. While you're here, you can rotate it easy. But once you lock on A, it doesn't rotate that easy. That's for the ease of use. <coughs> you have uh, actually three. Well, we have uh, a single shot continuous shot and a timer. The timer can be set between 2 and 12 seconds. There are actually only two options. You don't have like 5, 10, 10, 16, da da da. Only two options. 2 seconds timer, 12 seconds timer. That's it. Uh, the camera has maximum, maximum shutter speed of 4000, 1 4000 of a second. It has a bulb mode. The camera can record in a bulb mode up to 60 seconds. And the, the slowest shutter speed is one, it's actually eight seconds. It's eight seconds as it says it here. Normally I use it in aperture mode, which means I will uh, predefine the aperture in the lens. The camera calculates depending on the aperture I'm on. And you see, because it's a manual lens, the aperture is preset and it stays like that. Uh, so the camera can detect what light comes in and then calculate what the speed of the shutter will be. Uh, of course, you can use uh, manual. You can use it with uh, other gizmos. So what else this camera has? It has this button right here. What this button does is um, it will it will bring. You have a zoom factor of one. 5 and 10 times zoom if you want to focus on something. Let's see, I want to focus. I don't think I have a cool subject. Okay, there it is. Yeah, you see that's the 10, that's 5, and that's 1 time. Normally, I leave it at uh, 5 times zoom, so it's it's convenient. 10, 10 times is for very far away objects that we need to zoom in. On the back, what do we have? Well, on the front, let's finish the front. We have an uh, unlocking mechanism. If I press this, that unlocks the, the lens. I can take it out and clicks back. 
Uh, on the back we have a uh, live view button the one that you can operate with the LCD you have on the LCD then you have a uh, uh, level meter I hope you can see this uh, we have uh, this mode will show you a histogram and the information for the lens white balance uh, the the card how much space you have etc and another one just to go over there is another another function that was added later on uh, you can see the uh, the lines if for different aspect ratios that's 3.4 1 by 1 6 by 7 and 9 by 16 or 16 by 9 uh, what else does it have with the play button you can play uh, the images left right you can uh, or to, uh, go through the images with the zoom button well this one is a zoom button in this case you can zoom out and uh, review the images and uh, what else do we have here um, you can zoom in of course in a single image you can zoom in you can see uh, sharpness and etc uh, delete button for deleting videos and images of course this camera comes with a video button I forgot to mention that that's a recording button it records 1080p uh, 30 frames per second uh, video pretty good quality actually uh, the ISO works like this you, you can't change it now you can if you just press it once you cannot change it but if you press and hold it then you can change with the directional buttons here left and right you can adjust it uh, the ISO system is very well made uh, if you go um, you can set it to a certain ISO for example you can leave it also to uh, auto the, the standard ISO is from um, 200 you can pull down to 100 but it goes to 200 all the way to 640 is this the extended push uh, 6400 so let's leave it out too, but uh, the maximum exposure time is very good. Uh, that's something that, that I like a lot. You can you can set it to one times the focal length. So if so if I'm with 50 millimeter lens right now, the minimum shutter speed that this will this camera will measure or will accept is one fifty of a second, which means if the, the light is not enough it will push the ISO higher so that's that's the cool genius thing and later on they've added uh, you can do it two times the focal and four times the focal and and then you can have some manual uh, setups and then the menu I'll just go over very fast through the menu so you have lens detection you can have manual you can have off and you can have manual and you have all the good lenses actually if you're wondering what lenses to buy these are the lenses to buy from uh, Leica. These are all the good lenses that they have in their history. Self timer, like I said, 2 and 12 seconds. Light metering, you have classic, you have advanced, and you have uh, classic with LV disabled. Advanced is, it actually opens the, the shutter curtain and it will measure with the whole sensor. It's slower, doesn't sound that good. I normally prefer classic, I'm fine with it. Exposure bracketing, you can do. Um, three five five brackets and you can have aperture stops so you, ha you can have three aperture stops so total of six images will be taken here flash synchronization you can do start of exposure end of exposure slow shutter la 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 sharpness these are for jpeg modes well this compression actually really compresses and i've tested with this surface exactly with dust spots because it's black it cannot realize that ai this dust is gone on the on the compressed image so I leave it off I don't care about the size and the speed in most cases monitor brightness is automatic it's controlled by this uh, sensor here that's for the monitor brightness um, uh, EV brightness same thing uh, frame color you can have white or red mine is red focus peaking focus peaking is something cool uh, what it does is if you're in uh, live mode in live mode it will you see it outlines it outlines the sharp edge so you know when you're in focus um, what's next uh, focus aid is automatic what it does is it detects there is a sensor inside when it detects a movement on the lens it will zoom into your preset uh, zoom factor for focusing 
when using EVF, I'll show it later on. Histogram is standard or RGB and clipping. Copyright information, these are the, the file information that will be written on. Audio sensor cleaning, this is pretty cool. I use it for dust detection and open shutter. Um, open shutter is to open the shutter so you can clean the sensor. Pretty cool functions. Uh, just have to know how to use them. Watch my other video that I'm probably showing right now on the screen. Um, then audio, you have wind elimination, audio adjustments. Yeah, I'll go to audio, yeah, concert menu. You can, yeah, you can have the the level uh, of the microphone. It has a built-in microphone right there. I think that was it. And uh, exposure simulation. I prefer it permanent, or you can have it when you press the shutter button half down. It's a two-step shutter button. Auto power off, daytime acoustical signals. Now uh, these are English USB format the card firmware. I am on the latest firmware. I hope Leica will release a new firmware so we can uh, get uh, the benefits of the new lens coding. But if they don't, we don't really care. We can use it on manual, like I said. And that's about with the with the menu. And uh, it's pretty clean menu, pretty easy to use. The set button brings the most common functions while you're shooting so you can have the ISO here you can set the ISO you can uh, do the white balancing white balancing you can do all those automatic or with those presets Fluorescent, uh, with the LAN flash you have gray card and color temperature you can pick yourself a color temperature file format DNG plus uh, JPEG uh, any combination of those video recording is up to 25 frames per second uh, I'm correcting myself I said earlier it was 30 frames per second no it's 1080p 25 frames per second next thing we have compensation you can compensate up to three stops uh, actually use this wheel here you can see it goes minus uh, 3 to plus 2 plus 3 uh, in the settings what else do we have we have the how do you want the exposure to be measured uh, you want you can have spot center weighted and multi field spot is it's just a single pixel or a single spot on the on the image right in the center center weighted is it's about 50% of the whole frame is going to be measured a little bit less probably and multi field it will open the shutter shutter curtain and it will um, measure with the whole sensor for more precise measuring. You have profiles. I have uh, M color and black, black and white, and two R lenses profiles. So it's just for ease of use. And if I do any adjustments on the setting, I can just go back and do M color profile, and it will reset everything to where it was. Now uh, let's talk about uh, versatility. How the capabilities of this camera can be extended because you can actually do a lot more than than most people think with with this camera uh, so the first thing I want to show you is we will attach electronic viewfinder so here is what what happens if I press this button now now I'm looking through through the viewfinder we have an optical adjustment the good thing about the viewfinder is that you can shoot like Hasselblad type camera looking from above and you can choose any other angle. It's uh, one megapixel, not very high. Uh, it's a slow refresh rate, but for most things it works pretty good as long as you have some light to operate with because if it's dark, it's very pixelated and you will not be able to focus properly. On our lens, you cannot focus with the, uh, with the optical viewfinder because it doesn't function like the M lens. Uh, the only way to focus it is with LCD or EVF. I definitely prefer using the, the EVF because it's, it eliminates reflections. You can use uh, the EVF with uh, M lenses too, no problem. Some people actually prefer it. And with actually some len M lenses, uh, it is a must. Like for example, my 18mm uh, 
a lens the view the the optical viewfinder is only good for lenses between 28 millimeter and I would say 50 maximum 70 millimeter my 90 millimeter lens yes I used optical viewfinder but just a small uh, misalignment which you will not be able to see with your eyes uh, your object will not be in focus so with longer lenses definitely use EVF or LCD and with wider lenses of course I've used actually my wide lens 18 millimeter lenses uh, 100 degrees lens I've used it with uh, just the uh, optical viewfinder which actually works pretty pretty good too but you have to know the specifics and what actually will go into the frame so uh, let's attach this is uh, this is a very good lens this is the 100 millimeter put this one in so without without the EVF I cannot uh, I cannot operate this uh, lens but uh, this lens actually it can focus very close distance and uh, yeah you can now press the focusing button which will bring everything very close and I can be razor sharp so that's the EVF and how it works and what are the main functionalities of, of it um, just focusing when you have it like this and looking through the EVF it makes such a difference you're not shaking that much you can put it on your on your lab on on some table and you can just look through it and and focus it's it's amazing thing a must for this camera you can have you see that that's like some doctor's piece but it's actually pretty cool uh look at it it's like injection here i love this thing what it does is it's a manual remote shutter you can you can just put it there so what it does is you can you can you see it's a remote shutter that's all uh, very very interesting thing I've used it for some uh, product photography when I don't have to go all all the way to the back of the camera or I don't want to press the shutter or I don't want to use uh, the timer because what I normally do is if I don't want to use this piece this remote shutter I'll set the timer to two seconds so I'll press it the camera will stable stabilize if there are any shaking at all it will take the uh, the picture it's just another way of taking pictures that's that's why I say this camera has so many possibilities and if you use all the functions and the gadgets that comes with it it's it's amazing piece of uh, photo equipment and this is a stereo microphone actually from Leica and it comes with a stereo adapter what you do is you will attach it you see it, it goes into the electronics of the camera too so what it do is uh, you do this and you have a, a stereo microphone recording inside that uh, camera pretty pretty neat thing comes in a nice box it has extension you can actually clip it to somebody if you're making an interview you can you can use this attachment to clip it to somebody's shirt or anything like that pretty neat I mean, it's all like stuff it's pretty well made uh, pretty well taught it has an extension cable ins inside if that's needed Here's something that most people will never thought of using. You see, I have a, uh, it's a Rode Video Pro microphone that I uh, sometimes use for the video recordings. Well, I used to use for video recordings. What you do is you can attach it. You see, I can attach this piece to here. And in that way, I have another mounting bracket i have one here one here so i can mount the microphone here connect the the rode pro microphone to that microphone attachment and i can have the rode pro record the, the audio plus this one is like a rig it's much easier to handle when video recording of course you can mount this camera very easily on uh on a moza air cross gimbal i have it actually also you can do uh video stabilization with the Moza no problem I've tested it it works perfectly fine uh, with this camera because it's a small format another feature of the camera is that you can remove the bottom plate and replace it here is the bottom plate and replace it with the with the support plate uh, it gives you for bigger lenses it gives you a lot of support and some people actually without putting a uh, instead of putting a strap here uh, they actually carry it like that all day 
I feel it uncomfortable at some point your fingers will start hurting so but this is good if you if you want to do a video or uh, or if you want to uh, have a longer lens like the 100 millimeter that you saw or even bigger one that's uh, the 200 millimeter h200 zoom um, yeah it's it's a must but I, I barely barely use it that's how you go you unscrew it this comes down this one comes on head back the old small package in the like I said so so how is this camera behaving in 2022 I mean it's the same way as it behaved in 2012 and 2014 when I bought it actually amazing camera awesome for uh, video journalism for documenting for uh landscaping for traveling i mean the package is just small it produces 24 megapixel i forgot about that yes the sensor the sensor is 24 megapixel so i hope i've answered some questions uh and how i use it it's, it's like a transformer uh like those transform from transformer movies uh sometimes I, I i make a reference to to them for this camera because it's just so many things you can attach. You know, the good thing about this camera is just how transformable it is. You go from big thing, you add the EVF on it, and etc. etc. And you have this huge, almost SLR type camera. And if you want it small, you just unpack everything, go with your 50 millimeter or 35 is even a small lens, and just put it in your pocket in your winter jacket and go shooting. And that's that's what I do actually during the winters. The pockets of the jackets are so uh, big enough that I'll put it into the into the pocket and just just walk the city with it. It's it's just fun, but it all depends if you need out of focus, ease of use, which adds bigger size and and more weight. So you know I don't want bigger size and more weight, so I'll go with uh, manual focus, which is no problem and actually it's more satisfying. The thing is about this camera. It, when you shoot with it, it's more satisfying than anything else that I've shoot that I've shot with. I have uh, another digital one that I'm actually using right now to uh, make the video. Uh, it's a small one, compact one, but it just doesn't really the satisfaction, the image quality doesn't compare to to like M, uh, in my opinion. But everybody's different. Yeah, what else? I mean, uh, pretty good, pretty good tool. I'll keep using it. Uh, hope you liked the video. If you liked it, please uh, subscribe or like. Or if you have any qu questions about it, uh, put them down in the comments.